Okay. So uh, this is a problem with fractions. We did this way, way at the beginning of the semester. And the, tr the trick that we wanted to do was we wanted to use the LCD, the lowest common denominator, okay, to wipe out all of the denominators. So what single number will cancel with a five, a two, and a three? 15? Do, 15? No. 30. 30. 2 does not go into 15. Oops. Okay. Okay. Whoops. Yeah. So 30. Okay. So mentally, and you can do this step mentally, you're doing 30 over 1 times 2 over 5x plus 30 over 1 times one half equals 30 over one times two thirds X minus 30 times three. When you write the LCD up here, you're telling everyone in the world that you're going to distribute the LCD to every piece of that problem. Now, if you haven't made any mistakes, what should happen is when you reduce this, when you use your calculator to go 30 times two divided by five, there should be no more fractions. Now, some of you know about cross canceling, some of you don't, I'm not gonna worry about it now, but when you do 30 times two divided by five, you end up with 12X, work that on your calculator. Okay, plus 30 times one divided by two is 15. Equals 30 times two is 60 divided by three is 20 X. And here there's no cost canceling. So it's just a big fat 90, 30 times three. So the beauty of this technique is that yes, it gets messy and scary looking for a second, but then all of a sudden there's no more fractions, none. And you now do the problem in the way you want. So you just have to multiply the numerator by the other one and then divide it? Yeah, that's what you're doing. Because basically when you, when you wanna multiply fractions, if you have two thirds multiplied by seven over, I don't know, five, what you really do is multiply two times seven over three times five. And you get 10 over 15 or 14 over 15, I'm sorry. And then sometimes you can divide them, sometimes you can't. But all we're really doing is the basic rule for multiplying and reducing fractions. That's all we're doing. All right, real quick to go through this, I'm gonna take 20X away from both sides because I like my X's on the left-hand side. Although that's just me. So that's negative eight X plus 15 equals negative 90. Okay, take away 15 from both sides. It gives me negative eight X equals negative 100. And five? Yeah. 105. Okay. Divide both sides by negative eight. Okay. Now you can leave it as a mixed number. Uh, you can leave it as a decimal. It depends all, totally on the directions, but whatever you need, the negative divided by negative cancels out to be a positive, whatever that is. Um, 13.625, is that right? I don't know what it is. I, I'm happy with that, that's cool. Okay, so that's one problem I know that many of you forgot is clearing fractions out of an equation. That's one. You ready for a new one? He's done a raise okay. it yet. All right. 
Well, I'll leave it up here. I'll work off here to the side. I'll get out of your way in a minute. This was off of the chapter seven quiz, and it was one that several people missed for whatever reason. It was solve x squared minus 5x. So take a second to write it down, give it a try, and then we'll do it. Um, it just occurs to me, did everybody get my email today about that handout I put on Canvas? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it kind of gives you a breakdown of when you're solving a quadratic, a power equation, it kind of listed how to attack it. The first thing it had to do is it had to equal zero. It does. This one does. The powers have to be in order. Highest power first, next highest, and so on. It satisfies that. So then the th next thing was factor. And the first type of factory we always attempt is what they have in common. So factor out an X. They both have an X. That leaves X minus five. You can't factor anymore. You guys get so wrapped up. Oh, I got to factor and factor and factor. Hey, sometimes all you need to do is factor once and you're done. That's all you can do. Okay, then the next step was split it up. Either X equals zero or x minus five equals zero. And I called these the baby equations. If that's the big mama bear or papa bear equation, this is the baby bear equation, the littler one. Well, this is already solved, x is alone. This, if you add five, you get x is five to both sides. And so I said, either you box your answer or it's preferable that you put your answer in those solution set thingies. But I don't really care. The key is you bring them together into one, one big answer, zero and five. So that was a commonly missed problem, not by everybody, but by more than the average on tonight's quiz. Now, I just glanced at it. I didn't see all the problems. I get statistics on you know, how many people got problem number one right, problem number two right. So I get those statistics, but, um, and I just pick the ones that people miss the most on. So is that okay for this problem? Yes. Okay. Then tied in with it, okay, is this problem. Okay, I want you to solve this problem. X cubed, no, 8X cubed equals 50X. Let me make sure I copied it right. Yes, I did. So again, it's a power equation, cubes, squares. So it's going to follow those steps. Must equal zero, highest power and to lowest power and all that. So take a second to work on that one. Okay, so I started the problem a little bit. First thing you have to do is make it equal zero. Got to equal zero. Notice the highest power is first and then the least power is last. So the powers are in order. Okay. And my highest power number, the coefficient there is positive. I really want that. Well, okay. This is kind of tricky. So hang with me, guys. If you didn't get it, it's okay. I think it's, I want to say zero and five halves and negative five halves. I don't know. We'll see. So I look at this and I go, hey, what do they have in common? Well, they both have a two. Two goes into both of these and X goes into both of these. So we're technically dividing What's 8x cubed divided by 2x? Well, it's 4x squared. Minus, if I take a 2 and an x out of this, remember you're dividing it out, it's 25. Okay. 
So this is taking out what they had in common. But I'm not done because I look at this and I say, uh oh, that's a dose problem. Difference of two squares. One of the last examples I gave um, on that handout was multiple factoring. Just because you factor once doesn't mean you're done. See, this, this particular problem, we factored out an x. We said, hey, we're done. This problem, we factored out a 2x, and we're not done. There's more. So you recognize that as a difference of two squares. So I'm going to cut to the chase, and then I'll explain where it came from. But the 2x comes down, and this becomes 2x minus 5 and 2x plus 5 equals 0. So the dose part of it becomes those two. OK, then we separate it. So either 2x equals 0 or 2x minus 5 equals 0 or 2x plus 5 equals 0. Okay, again, I'm going to start shortcutting. You can solve each of these. These are back to chapter one and two. Divide both sides by two on this one, and you get x is zero. Do add five divided by two, you get x is five divided by two, which is two and a half. I don't care if you call it two and a half or five halves or 2.5. This gives you x is negative. Uh, two and a half or five halves. I'm sorry. So again, subtract five from both sides, divide both sides by two. So this solution is zero, five halves, negative five halves. Now, or you may see somebody write this zero, comma, plus minus five halves. You may have seen that. That's mathematicians' way of being lazy again. Because look at what you have here. You have a positive 5 over 2 and a negative 5 over 2. So mathematicians have decided, oh, it's much easier to say plus minus. Positive 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2. Because for some reason, it breaks their wrist to have to write it down twice. I don't know. Mathematicians are weird. I, both of these are perfectly fine, whichever one you want. And remember, you don't have to say five halves. You could say two and a half. You could say 2.5, whichever you prefer. That doesn't matter. So back here, we had to make it equal zero. We had to factor it twice. First, take out what they had in common, and then factor the dose factoring. Then split it up, solve the babies. Remember what I said, I'll, I'll take questions in a second. General rule of thumb, it's not 100% true, but it's about 99% true. If you have a power of two equation, you will have two answers. If you have a power of three equation, you'll generally have three answers. If you think back to the first problem we did, it was a power of one. We had one answer. Okay. All right. I skipped some steps. Questions? Everybody's okay with factoring my dose in my head right there? Yeah, it makes sense to me so far. Well, so far, yeah. <laughs> It makes sense until I look at the test. And what is it that every student in the world said? It looks so easy when he does it on the board. And then I get home and I try to give us a sample one of that. Of what? A sample uh, one, one of, of, of the like doses or anything. Just another one to run through. Uh, just another one real quick. A quick dose. Okay. Do you want to solve it or just factor it? Doesn't matter. Solve it. Solve it. Okay. So. Okay. Let's solve. 
Um, oh, shoot. Well, I, I'm going to make it. <sighs> Crud, I can't even think. Um, 12x cubed minus. No, that's the same thing. Minus 3x, this will get you equals zero. Yeah, that'll get you. Well, uh, it, it's hard to think of something that's similar, but not just exactly the same. So 12x cubed minus 3x equals zero. Go ahead and try and solve that for a second. Okay, so this one was actually a little bit easier because it was already in order, okay? And it already equals zero, so I'm happy there. So the first thing I try to do is factor. So what do they, then the first type of factoring I try to do is what they have in common. So I can see that three goes into both of those and X goes into both of those. So three X is in common. So if I divide a 3x out, I get 4x squared minus, and remember somebody at the start of class asked the question, what happens if we factor all of 3x out in front? What do we have to leave behind? A one. A one. A one. Okay. So I'm kind of using this to kind of refresh what we talked about at the beginning. So this is this is the original problem. This is the first step. This is to factor. Uh, this is what they had in common. I'm sorry. Come on. Okay. But I'm not done. Okay. This part here is still a dose, a difference of two squares. And the reason I chose this is because students really fight this particular one. Okay. Um, but what you're supposed to, on a difference of squares, you're supposed to think, how can I write the first one as a quantity squared? And how can I write the second one as a quantity squared? Now you're supposed to think that, you don't have to write that down. Okay, so how do I write the first one, 2x, 4x squared as quantity squared, what well, would be a 2x, 2x, the quantity squared is 4x squared. But what about one? What squared, what do I put in here that equals one? Turns out to be one. one. One is its own square. And that really bugs students a lot. They just, they, they can't think of that. It, it, it hurts them. So anyways, uh, we can say that this becomes two x minus one and two x plus one because of the dose, bring down the three X, because that was part of it, and it always equals zero. Separate it, three X equals zero, or two X minus one equals zero, or two X plus one equals zero. Solving, uh, again, I'm gonna skip some steps, divide both sides by three, this one is going to be x is a half. This one is going to be x is negative a half. So my solution set is zero, comma, okay, one half, comma, negative one half. Just because I don't want to get too fancy, just because I showed you something new doesn't mean you have to use it always. So Vince, is that okay? You asked for it. Got it, yeah. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Okay, um, so, boom, let's try another one. Unless, does anybody have any questions about any of these before I start to erase them? No, all right, here we go. Okay. 
Okay, another solve problem. System of 3x minus 4y equals negative 26 and 2x plus 3y equals 11. So this is called a two by two system of equations. Remember you guys asked me all the billions of questions about a three by three, because that had all the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all that other crap. But this is a two by two. So let's pause, give you guys uh, about three minutes, three or four minutes to work on it. Okay, so let's go back quick lesson in solving a system. That's what we're doing. A system meant two or more equations with two or more variables. This is called a two by two, but we also talked about a three by three. And if you get into the business world, they do four by fours, five by fives, they get up to 10 by tens. But usually after three by three, they just hand you a calculator or a program on your computer to do it. But we're, we're talking about the basics right now. So to solve a system, we had three basic techniques. The first technique is we could graph them and see where they cross. Okay. And I've watched you guys graph. You don't want to graph. Okay. <laughs> Second system what's called substitution. The third method, okay, we have is called addition slash elimination. And it really should be called elimination with addition because we wanted to add things together and have a variable get eliminated. That was those were the three techniques that we've taught in this class. There's a couple more that I am choosing to not do. Okay. It, I doubt sincerely you'll be harmed by not, not knowing the other techniques. If we ever have a free night sometime after the exam, um, I'll show you one of the techniques. It's very common, but not now. Okay. The substitution method okay the substitution method told us to pick one equation e me mighty mo this equation is going to go it doesn't matter and get a variable by itself the substitution method said pick one of the equations doesn't matter which one and get a variable by itself well, i want you to stop and think for a second if you took the top one and said, I'm going to get X by itself, are you making the problem easier or harder or uglier, I should say? If you tried to get X by itself, wouldn't you be introducing all kinds of fractions and decimals into the problem? Yeah, you don't want to do that. Same thing with the bottom equation. Okay, if you tried to get Y by itself for some reason, okay? It wouldn't be wrong, but you'd be making the problem infinitely more messy than it needed to be. Okay. Not wrong, just way messy. And the messier things are, the more likely you are to, to uh, get the wrong answer. So by, by process of elimination, we're all bad at graphing. Graphing is also slow and inaccurate. This one doesn't lend itself to substitution. Okay, because it's, it would have fractions up the yin yang. So we're going to do the addition elimination. Now, I know I didn't say that you had to do this, but I'm going to still do it anyway. I'm going to take equation A and multiply it by three. So that's going to give me 9x minus 12y equals, what's that? Three. 98, negative 98. Maybe I should get my calculator out. 
26 times. 78. Is it 98? 78? 78. Thank you. That would have been a big mess. Thank you. Negative 78. Okay. And I'm going to take equation B and multiply it by 4. So I'm going to write 4 times B. That's going to give me 8x plus 12y equals 44. I think that's right. Now, the question is, and this is what everybody was fighting when we first introduced this, is where'd you get the three and the four? Well, you ran through your multiplication tables and you said, what could I multiply these by to turn two numbers into the same but opposites? So I kind of said, hmm, if I multiply this by three, it'll be negative 12. If I multiply this by four, it'll be positive 12. So they would be the same but opposites, and that's what I wanted. So that's where I got these numbers from. I was kind of looking ahead. So we add these two together, and we get 17x, the y's drop out, equal 34 negative. When you add negative 78 and 44, I think you get 34. Divide both sides by 17, and you get x is negative 2. Or remember, you're not done. You're not done. You need to also figure out what y is. If x is negative 2, you got to figure out what y is. Okay. Plug it into b. Plug it into b. Okay. So if we go b, we have 2 times x, which is negative 2, plus 3y equals 11. So this is negative 4. I don't have to show that. I'm just going to say I'm going to add 4. That's negative 4, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I have 3y is 15, so that's y is 5. Okay, now um, I need to get to the answer, but before I do that, 95% of my work is done. 95% of my work is done. So does anybody have any questions about anything I've done so far? We're not finished with this, okay? Because I want to make a, a point as, as usual. I can't let anything go, okay? So are you okay with my technique and how I got my answers? Did anyone multiply the top by two and the bottom by three and eliminate the X's? So yeah, I did that. Yeah, okay. And you got the same answers in the end, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So cool. That's fine. Okay. It's okay. Personally, I like to take advantage of numbers that are already positive and negative. But that's just me. You don't have to do that. Now, watch carefully. Okay, I'm going to take the two answers. Okay, and I'm right in the okay, yeah, okay. So I've got two possible answers up here. This answer, solution set negative two five. This answer, solution set parentheses negative two five. Which one of these is correct? The left. This one here? Yeah. No. <laughs> Good try, though. <laughs> okay. This is wrong. Um, how, which I'm trying to think of the easiest way to tell you. Think about... Because it's coordinates. Good. That's it. Because... If we graphed it, everything comes back to if we graphed it. If we graphed it, these would cross, okay, at a point. That's what we're looking for. And the reason we know is because we have x, y 
So this is the x-axis and the y-axis, okay? So they cross at the point, which is negative two, five. And points have to be expressed with the order, the, the parentheses around them. They're an ordered pair. These are just two separate numbers. This represents, this is what we, when we were doing the previous problems, go back and look, that was X could have been negative two or X could have been five. This is an X and an X. This is an X and a Y. And it represents the order, the place where the two lines cross as an ordered pair, a coordinate, good call. So I wanted to make a point of the proper notation. And yes, you will lose points if you don't use parentheses when you should have in your answer. Now this solution set garbage, that's a different issue. Okay, I'm not, I'm gonna try my very best and not take points away if you didn't put the funny braces. But there's a major difference between just listing negative two five and listing the ordered pair negative two five. Those are way different animals. Okay, enough, I'm babbling. Questions about the solving of a two by two system. Do you want to erase it? Yeah, please. Okay, okay. <laughs> one, it, one more it, second. Thank you. All right, one more, let me know because uh, I need to make room on the board, but we're okay. Thanks, I'm good, thank you. How about anybody else? Are we okay? Yes, I'm good, thank you. All right, here we go. Um, okay. I want you to, new problem, graph this system. Three X plus two Y less than or equal to eight and two X minus six is greater than four. Okay, and I have not made a misprint. So interrupting everybody. So what we want to do, there's there's a couple things. First, first we want to graph the lines. And second, we want to shade. Now how did I know I was going to shade? Okay, whenever your problem has a less than and greater than in it, the chances are really good your answer is going to involve shading somehow or something weird like that, an extra step. So I need to graph the lines. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to take 3x plus 2y and we pretend that it equals eight. We'll worry about the less than greater than in a minute. Now, we've gone round and round. I fought you guys, you fought me. Okay, what's the best way to graph this? I don't know. The best way to graph it is what's best for you. Okay, personally, I like building a table of values. X, plug it in, get Y. But you, many of you, not all of you, but many of you fought me on that. You didn't like it. When X is zero, turns out Y is four. If Y is zero, turns out X is eight over three, eight thirds, two and two thirds, something like that. If you don't like that, that's cool, okay? You can have three X plus two Y equals eight. Take away three, you get two y equals negative three x plus eight. Divide, 
y equals negative 3 halves x plus 4. Why is that so good? Because it tells me my slope is negative 3 over 2, and my y-intercept is 0, 4. It's always 0, comma the b number. So I, it doesn't matter how you graph this. It doesn't matter at all as long as your graph looks something like my graph. So if I go 0, 4, one, this, this one is 0, comma 4. And 8 thirds is like 2 and 2 thirds, comma 0. 8 thirds, which is right about there. If you did a similar thing, if you went to 4 and then used rise over run, you rise negative 3, 1, 2, 3, run 2, you'd get the same line. You'd get different points, but the same line. So now our first thought, I, I can, I'm almost ready to graph the first line. Question, do I graph it with a solid line or do I graph it with a dotted line? Solid line. Solid because of the equal. Okay, so here I go. Solid line, there's my first graph. Okay, still working with the first graph. Now I have to decide where do I shade? Where do I shade? Okay. The safe way to figure out where to shade, or, excuse me, that's, that's a wrong choice of words. The technically correct way to figure out where to shade is to pick a test point. Okay. So you have this line and you try and pick up one point that's either above it or one point that's below it. Doesn't matter which, you won't go wrong. But because we're lazy, generally we like to use zero, zero as a test point. Okay, so if we test zero, zero, whoops, come on. Okay, in the original problem, we have three times zero, plus two times zero is less than or equal to eight. Well, that gives us is zero less than or equal to eight. True. So our test point was true. Our test point was below and to the left. So that means everything below and to the left will be true and will be shaded. So I'm gonna write a little note and just say, I'm gonna go below this line for a second. I'm not gonna shade it now. I'm just gonna write myself a note to say that's where I am gonna shade. Okay, stop, pause. I graphed the first line and I determined that I'm gonna shade down here. Anybody have any question on that? Graph the first line, figure out where to shade. Are we okay or not okay? Okay over here. Okay. Now we've talked about shortcuts for determining shading. Fine, if you, as long as you've got down here is where to shade, I'm cool. Okay, I don't want to confuse this with all the different techniques right now. So let's go to the second one. The second line is 2x minus 6. Pretend that it equals 4. Again, it's a pretend because we just want to graph the line. So this gives me 2x equals 10. This gives me x equals 5. Okay. My favorite word, WTF. Anybody follow sports at all? Follow football? Okay. And the Washington football team? Okay. It used to be called the Redskins, but we don't call it that anymore because that's inappropriate socially. But 
Have anybody seen that on all the sports pages? I keep looking at that and keep thinking, I think WTF and they keep writing WFT. And I just, my brain goes to weird places. I don't know. They probably did that on purpose. Yeah, right, sure. <laughs> probably, no. I think they couldn't figure out what else to do. They couldn't call it uh, something demeaning to Native Americans. So they just call it the Washington football team, WFT or something. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who sees that. All right. Why is this a WTF, guys? What's wrong with it? Why is it WTF? I think no Y. No Y value. Okay. It's supposed to have a Y value. The other problem had a Y value. This is never Y value. So it's a trick question. Okay. Now, you don't need to do this, but this is the way I think about it. This is saying X is locked in at five. It can't change. It has to stay five forever and ever. But Y is, can be anything I want. It's so unimportant that they didn't even include it in the equation. So if you plot those points, X is five comma zero. Okay, so this was two, three, four, five comma zero. X is five comma negative one, X is five comma seven. So plotting those points, and it doesn't matter what you pick. You get, you can see, you get a vertical line here. You can see that. Question, do I sketch it in as a solid line or a dotted line? Dotted line. Dotted because of that right there, dotted. Okay, so now I have to decide, uh, where am I going to shade on this one? Okay, where am I going to shade on this one? Well, this is kind of tricky. If we go back and solve this problem, 2x, the, the, the test point is a little tricky on this problem. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to use a test point. If we just solve the problem with the greater than, we get 2x is greater than 10, we get x is greater than 5. Okay. If this is the line x equals 5, then to the right must be greater than 5. That's what this problem says. X is greater than 5. Boom. So on this line, I want to shade to the right. So I want to be below the black line, because that's what I wrote up here, below the black line and to the right of the red line. Below the black line, but to the right of the red line. Well, in my opinion, that's this little region right down here. That's below the black line, and it's to the right of the red line. And that's your answer. That's how you graph a system of inequalities. Now I can explain things a little bit differently. So questions. This might be a little bit out of topic, but um, M would be DNE, right? No, that's not off topic, and you are correct. There is no slope. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I want you guys to see that. This is, there's some weird stuff here. Um, the equation for this line, uh, where can I write this? Uh, make sure you guys can see. Okay, this line, this red line is x equals 5. That's its equation. X is five on that line, but its slope is D N E or that's mom. Technically you should write no slope. Okay, no slope, but D N E is what mom accepts. So I'll accept it also. Okay, so there's a difference. They're related to each other, but they're different. The equation, 
okay, is different than the slope. They're not the same. They're related, but not the same. Vertical lines have no slope, D and E. No, that was a really good question. That was not off topic at all. It was, it was an important part of this problem. Anybody else? Okay, so, I only have, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So when um, uh, whatever number equals Y, um, what is M zero or is it? DM? Yes, it's zero. Why? Okay. Um, okay, question. Why is this D and E? Well, I'll show you why. Okay. Okay. Let's let's take the slope using these points. And remember the formula for slope is y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. So let's use this one and this one. Y sub two is seven. Y sub one is zero, seven minus zero. X sub two is five. X sub one is five. So this becomes seven over zero, a zero on bottom of any fraction. Whether it means slope or not, it doesn't matter. A zero on bottom is totally undefined, impossible. We don't like it. That's why we get D and E. That's why this was D and E, that M does not exist. The slope doesn't exist. Now, let me erase this middle part. Let's make up a line and let's go horizontal, okay? And let's say this is y equals three. So this point might be negative three comma three. This point might be zero comma three. Because when it says y equals three, it's saying that the y parts of your coordinates are always three. And there's more, but we're gonna do this. So now, how do I find the slope? y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. So the second y, and it doesn't matter who the second y is, but it's three minus the first y, three, over the second x, zero, minus the first x, negative three. So on top, you have zero. On bottom, even if you screw up, let's say for some reason your brain went spazzo when you said zero minus minus three is 15. Let's just say your brain went spazzo on that. It doesn't matter. What is any fraction worth whose numerator is zero? Overall, it's still zero. So for a horizontal line, its slope is going to always be zero if you go through this process. Now, hopefully, you got this particular denominator was a three, but it wouldn't have mattered. Once the numerator is a zero, okay, then the whole problem is a zero. So is that okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Professor, back, back to that. Now, uh, uh... A slope always requires a rise and run, right? X and Y pretty much? Yeah. Well, if you're going to use it to graph, oh. if it just says, if it just says, give me the slope, then you can say zero. Give okay. me the slope, you can say it does not exist. If you're going to use it to graph, then you need a rise and run. Okay. Got it. So this would say, oh, look, I'm going to rise seven, but not go sideways. I'm going to rise seven, but not go sideways. That's what that says. If I were to graph it. Okay, good question. You guys are asking really good, insightful questions. The subtleties of math um, 
sometimes it gets in the way of all this and you guys are asking really good subtle questions i like it all right Professor, anybody else yeah go ahead shoot uh, this doesn't have to do with the problem i was just going to ask real quick um the chapter seven quiz was that already due at six o'clock or are we going to get to do that tonight no that was due at six o'clock tonight okay okay um okay so i have two more problems and then i'm done with whatever review i wanted to do okay and if you guys if you're done after that and you want to check out great um remember you still have the chapter six seven uh homework that you're working on you still have all the review for the exam number one which is tomorrow night so um if you check out early, fine. I just hope you keep studying. All right. This was another problem on the chapter seven quiz. Okay. And I think Carmen asked something similar to this last night. As soon as I saw this, I, I thought of Carmen. Okay. It was to factor this. And it was P Q minus five P squared Q plus P Q squared. Okay. Um, and maybe I'm thinking too hard. I don't know. Uh, this was this again i glanced at the results from the um chapter six quiz right about five minutes before it closed and this was the most commonly missed problem on the quiz so far okay it says factor and it's got all these p's and q's in it. well What's the first type of factoring we always try to do? What everything has in common? What everything has in common. And I like the fact that you said everything. Okay, so what do they have in common? P and Q. A P and a Q. I can take a P and a Q out of everybody. Everybody at least has a P and a Q. But remember, if I take all of P and Q out, out front, what's left behind? A one, okay? If I take P, Q out of this, I have minus five P. There was two P's, I brought one of them out. I brought all the Q's out, left five in. Plus, okay? Take a P and a Q out of this. Okay, there's a Q left. Okay. The question you guys have to ask yourself is can I do any more? Is there any more factoring that can be done? I don't think so. So we're done. But this one in front is required because remember, you want to be able to check your work. By remultiplying is PQ times one this, is PQ times that phi P this, is PQ times this, this up here. Okay, so I don't know why that was missed. I remember Carmen asked a question similar to this last night. Maybe this wasn't it, I don't know. But that's it. And is that okay with everybody or not? Can you solve that? No. Okay. Oh, oh. Good question. The only thing you can solve is if it had an equal sign. There's a difference between, okay. No, the answer, short answer is no. Now you can go to sleep. Okay. Um, huh. Let's take. Okay. 
you you said the magic words and and I'm hoping to keep everybody's attention for a few more minutes. I know learning math for hours on end, um, okay, it's really easy to fall asleep, okay, hit your head on your keyboard and then your whole system crashes. But hang on for a few more minutes, guys. Okay, this particular problem would have said factor. This problem would have said solve. Okay, the first thing I know it's solved because it equals zero. Okay, but let's go through this because I want to show you something. People, one of the problems students have is they don't know when to stop. It's like me, I don't know when to stop talking. I just keep babbling and babbling and babbling, okay? Students don't know when to stop doing work. So on this problem, okay, if this is a one, we have AC is negative 15. So we're gonna use five times three, positive five times negative three. Now remember the shortcut when you're factoring a trinomial and the A value is a one. You don't have to do all that grouping stuff. You can just simply say x minus or x plus five and x minus three. And you're done. X plus five, x minus three are your two factors. Quit. Now, hang on. Stop. This said factor, so I factored and I stopped. This is solve. So the first thing you do is you factor it. Okay. AC is negative 15, same garbage. So we get X plus five, X minus three equals zero. But now we must continue. Contin, good spelling, Foster, continue. Why? Because we solve the babies. Okay. Big difference. Okay. Lots of times students get really confused on the test. It will say solve. They will factor and stop. Well, you missed all these steps. You started correctly, you factored it, but then you missed the rest of this. You didn't understand what solving meant. Solve means find the answer for X. X is these. This problem just said factor, but a lot of students continue on. They continue and they solve it. Well, you, that tells me you didn't know what the instructions meant. So you're gonna lose credit a little bit, not a lot. Okay, but you'll lose some credit if you go ahead and solve this. So please make sure if it says factor, factor and stop. If it says solve, factor and continue, get X alone. That's what solve actually means, okay? So uh, I think it was Carmen who made a comment and I jumped all over it. Um, and I don't even know if that's what you were asking, but the original problem couldn't have been factored any further and couldn't have been solved because it was not an equal sign, that PQ problem. Okay, but I jumped all over it and anticipated your question. So Carmen, I apologize if that wasn't your question, but to everybody else, is that okay? Do you guys understand the difference between factor versus solve. All right, somebody, somebody has their train going. Frazier, right. turn down your music. All right, I have one more problem then. If nobody has anything to do and nobody's gonna play any more music. One more problem, are, you, are we all ready? 
I was just going to say that yeah. that wasn't the answer to my question, but I do appreciate the clarification because I didn't <laughs> run into that problem earlier. Okay. So do you want to ask your question again and then this time I'll listen to it? Um, it's more of something that I was curious about, but we can go back or we can talk about it at the after class. Oh, all right, fine. Then here we go. Last question of the night for me at least. Hmm. You know what I just figured out? Uh, okay, good. I'm still recording. All right. Here we go. In a right triangle, the longer leg is seven more than the short leg the hypotenuse is okay this gets confusing two less than three times the short leg. Find the hypotenuse. Find the length of the hypotenuse. So, I'm going to do this in pieces. I'm going to let you get started. Then I'm going to interrupt, work out the first few steps, and then stop while you continue. Okay, because I don't want you to waste your time if you started wrong. Okay, I don't want you to go through the whole thing. So let me pause it. Okay, so watch how I started it. I'll pause it in a second. Okay and let you guys work some more, so hang with me. So X is the short side. First one says the longer leg, leg means one of the sides of the triangle, is seven more than the short leg. So more than meant plus. So short leg plus seven is seven more than the short leg, okay? I'm gonna assume most people got that, because we've done a couple. But then it says the hypotenuse is two less than three times the short leg. So here's three times the short leg, but we have to be two smaller than that, two less than that, two smaller. So three times the short leg, which is three times X, take away two is two less than the short leg. Okay, from here, your equation is going to be x squared plus x plus seven squared equals three x minus two quantity squared. Because the Pythagorean theorem said a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? So I'm gonna pause it now, and it's gonna take some work for you guys to square these, okay? So square these out and make it equal zero, and then I'm gonna interrupt you again. Okay, real quick, make sure I got everybody. This is gonna be x squared plus, if you properly square that out, you should get x squared plus 14x plus 49. Okay. Actually, I'm running out of room. So I got to kind of move over here. Okay. 
So this will be, I'm sorry, x squared plus x squared plus 14x plus 49. That's if you squared that out equals, if you square this out, it'll be 9x squared plus 12x plus, minus 12x plus 4. So x squared, if you square out this quantity, 3x minus 2 squared, that means you have to multiply by itself, OK? And either use the matrix box that we talked about, or FOIL, or whatever you want. But it should become 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. OK? Um, so if you got that, make it equal 0. Let's pause for a second. Well, you guys keep working. So I foiled out these quantities, and then I subtracted 2x squared, 14x, and 49 from both sides, made it equal 0. Okay. And now I have this. And the question off screen, not in the recording, was are we going to get anything as ugly as this on the test? The answer is no. Okay. The question was also, are we supposed to use our calculator? And my answer was, I wish you wouldn't, but I really can't stop you, other than I'm going to look at your work. And if your work doesn't make sense, but you still get the right answer, I'm going to go, no way. I ain't going to do it. You won't get credit for it. OK, so I will grade your work. It takes me hours. OK, once you guys finish your test tomorrow night, uh, I'll start grading them Friday morning. And I won't be done probably until Saturday morning. It takes me hours to grade your test because I look at all of your steps. I really do. People don't that believe that. That was at 11.59, right? Yes. Not six. OK. Right. That's the test. There's a difference between test and quiz, OK? So. Um, I, I look, that's why I have glasses. That's why I had surgery on my eyes so I can see better. That's why everything, because I actually, for the 40 something years I've been teaching, I've always looked at a student's work. Very seldom do I only look at the answer. Your work is important to me. Anyway, back to here. Okay, enough preaching and BS. So if you use the AC, and I totally accept, um, I totally accept that this problem is over the top ugly. Okay, this is uh, minus five, this is plus nine. Okay, so um, just trust me, please, on this one. These should be the answer, the factored answers you get. If you use the AC and all this other crud, the AC and grouping, this is it. So then we say, hmm, 7x plus 9 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. So this tells me x equals negative 9 over 7. This tells me x equals 5. This is a reject, not because it's a fraction, but because x is a negative number. And we've discussed several times that you can't have a negative length of a triangle or a square or anything. So that's just a reject. So the only possible answer was 5 for x. But the problem said find the hypotenuse. Well. A hypotenuse was 3x minus 2. x here was the short leg. But the problem says find the hypotenuse. So you go back and you say, OK, the hypotenuse is 3 times 5 minus 2, which is 15 take away 2, which is 13. That's the hypotenuse, 13. And we're done. And please 
I, I'm not going to bother to explain how I got that factored form. Um, it's just too nasty and it won't be that bad on the test. That's just ugly. Professor, quick question. Yes, sir. And it's probably related to what you just mentioned. I'm still debating that negative 26 X in the middle for some reason on the factoring part. This here? Uh, yes. You mean where it came from or? Where'd it go? Okay. Sorry. Um, no, no, it's okay. I'm trying to decide what can I erase? Can I erase the words for everybody? Yes. Okay. No one's yelling at me. Okay. So let's look at this. Let's look at another problem. X squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay. Trust me, it's this. If you factor x squared plus 7x plus 10, it'll be this. Question, where's the 7x? In between this, the, the 2 and the 5. Right? Adding and multiplying together. Right. Right? So where's the 26? It's in here when you 7 times 5 is negative 35 plus 9 is negative 26. The negative 26 is in here if you remultiplied it out. Just like the seven is in here if you multiplied it out. It's, the seven is in there somewhere, okay? It's easier to see on this problem because it's smaller numbers, harder to see in this problem because they're uglier. Okay, let me, let me do it one other way, one other way. Um, Richard, did you were you here when I talked about my belly button as a form yeah. of factoring? Okay, then if you recall, the innies and the outies, the innies and the outies always make the middle because your belly button is your innies and your outies, and your belly button is located in the middle of your body. So your innies and your outies make the middle term. So check this one out. If we do the innies, 9x, and the outies, negative 35x, the innies and the outies add up to negative 26x, which is in the middle of your problem. So the 26 was here. It was just hidden inside all those other numbers. Yes, it's been a long day. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Are you sure you're okay with that? Are oh, yeah. Sure? That was numbers all day long today. Okay. I, I, I see it now. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, guys, that's it. Um, I'm going to stop the uh, uh, video, but I'll stick around. Oh, wait. One more thing. Test is open tomorrow at 6 o'clock. You have 80 minutes to do the multiple choice, but within that 80 minutes, you can do it as many times as you want. So you can submit it and unsubmit it and whatever, you can do that. But you have to get both of them done by midnight, 11.59 tomorrow night, okay? I will be online probably from six until, let's say eight o'clock. So if you have questions, I can't help you do a problem, but I can certainly clarify some things. So I'll be in my Zoom. You do not have to log in unless you have a question. All of your work is on Canvas. All right, that's it. Good night.